everybody, today we're gonna go ahead and make some pellet grill smoked wings. These are gonna be really good. Not a ton of smoke on them, but they'll be good and crispy. We're using a decent wing. I'll show you how we go about doing this. We're gonna start by lighting the grill up and we wanna keep it in its smoke setting between 180 and 200 degrees. So with the Pit Boss uh, Pro Series grill, if you go to the smoke setting, it's at about 180. So I'm just gonna leave it on its smoke setting. We'll get it kicked on and we'll see what temperature we get up to. The grill first starts up. Think of any other fire that starts to smolder. It, it smokes a lot in the very beginning. You can hear it. I can hear it's uh, the flames starting to kick on. And if I open this up, I can now see flames and you'll notice the smoke will dissipate at this stage. Perfectly normal. Don't worry about the really heavy smoke that starts at the beginning. As a matter of fact, you'll even notice it's a little bit more white and smoldery, um, but it quickly goes away and, and turns into the smoke you would expect to have. So with our rub all mixed up, it's now just time to go ahead and get our chicken. And this is a little bit of a unique recipe. And I will say, I like to have, um, I like to use certain types of chicken. Um, I prefer to get chicken that has not been frozen and also that's air chilled as opposed to water chilled. The difference, if you think about it, when, pro when chickens are being processed, a lot of processing locations will process the chicken into parts, right? And then they toss them into um, an ice cold water bath. And that quickly brings the temperature down to, to avoid any kind of spoilage. The challenge with doing that is that that water also extracts out a lot of the flavors and the juices and everything that is sort of nutritious about the chicken. If you can get air chilled, it's almost the exact same process, except instead of going into ice cold water, it goes into an ice cold air uh, chamber. And that's how it ultimately stays, um, stays cool. Um, I can get this at my local grocery store. You can buy this kind of stuff at most places. Uh, oftentimes, if you look in the organic section, you might find the ones that say air chilled. Um, the ones that say water chilled won't say that. So if it doesn't specify, then it's definitely not air chilled, by the way. It costs a little bit more. This was $4.49 a pound, and um, for the wings, uh, it was like $4.19 a pound for the ones that were um, water-cooled. So not a significant difference in price, quite frankly, you know, a quarter or something in, in this particular size. Uh, this is only a pound and a half. It looks like about uh, eight wings or so. Um, and you'll see a couple of things. You'll see things like uh, antibiotic free, no hormones added. That stuff's all marketing material. It hasn't been legal to do that in decades now. So when you see that, that's just to make you feel good. You'll also see things like uh, cage free. Um, that also means essentially nothing. Um, it, it, a cage-free chicken just it, the, the requirements for it are so easy to obtain it essentially means it has to have an opening for a chicken to get out and have access to outside of the cage the reality is they're social creatures if there's an opening and all the other chickens are in a big giant hen house that's exactly where they stay they don't go out um, if you get um, free range chickens where they are truly um, feeding off the ground and there's a certain requirement when they use that term. They have to have X number of square feet of um, open space per chicken in order to, to get that qualification. The difference is they're actually eating the things that chickens eat, right? They're eating the, the grass and seeds and they're eating uh, grubs and things in the ground that they get all their nutrition from. Makes the chicken taste a lot better. You'll also notice that this ends up being a little bit yellower on the skin. It's because it hasn't extracted all of that flavor that comes right out of the chicken. Uh, so let's go ahead and get these things prepared. I do like to um, cut my um, my chicken wings down into segments. I just I don't cut the I don't cut the flappers and separate them from the drumettes, but I do um, cut the wing tips off. Um, just it seems to make it a little easier when you're getting ready to eat them on the grill. So let's get these open and set up. Uh, I often just do this with a pair of poultry shears. If you see these uh, these shears with the sharp edge on, and they always come apart, so you can wash them correctly when you're done uh, done trimming these things up. Let's go ahead and take these apart. You're looking for the spot right between the bones. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that spot right where it seems to be soft and cut the, the wing tip off. And as you, as you put it in place, you'll, you'll sort of feel when the scissors go right into that spot. You can certainly do this with a knife as well. I just find it a little easier to do with the poultry shears. All right, so we made our rub before. This is kind of an interesting recipe. This one's a little different than a dry rub. We're gonna go ahead and put about a third of a cup of canola oil into our bowl with our chicken wings. Uh, by the way, you wanna use canola oil. I wouldn't use olive oil. You're wanting this for, um, for, its, for its characteristics and its smoke point. So we're just gonna do a third of a cup. Looks like about it. And to that, we're gonna add in about four tablespoons of our rub. It doesn't have to be exact, but so we'll go to somewhere around four tablespoons. Hmm. 
time to make up some more rub. <laughs> and now we really just want to mix this around. The nice thing is you can just sort of toss these around uh, or, or use your hand to get them well coated. Uh, I do like to just sort of get my hands in and, and mix them around like this a bit. It's a good way to make sure you've got them completely coated. And it's important that you get the oil on them. That's going to help keep these things and crisp them up a little bit when they get into the uh, in the grill and prevent them from sticking quite as much on the grates. And we'll put these on in a few moments. Now that we've got these chicken wings rubbed and covered in this canola oil, we got the grill up at 350 degrees. We're going to put them on for about 45 minutes. That's all it takes to get them good and crispy. That oil is going to help keep them from sticking down on the bottom. It's always good to have a spatula in the end, just in case you have to get them uh, scraped up a little bit off the bottom of that grate. But this does a pretty good job of keeping them from sticking. grilling and I saw something move right behind the grill. There's actually a rabbit right there. You gotta be careful. He may be getting smoked next. <laughs> Got a little bit of this uh, seasoning here from the rub. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of that right on these couple up front. We'll set the timer on this. We'll wait about 35 to 40 minutes and we'll check them since I'm not probing these. It's been about 45 to 50 minutes. The wings look like they're good at about 325 to 350. Uh, it's dark outside, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab them off the grill, bring them back inside where it's a little bit brighter. We'll All right, just pull one of these off the grill. Let's go ahead and probe the temperature. We'll check it out. So I've got our one wing right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and check the temperature where I can see a little better. Uh, I don't actually have one of those digital thermometers. I may end up picking one of those up with an LED backlight on it. It might be kind of nice to have. But I'm gonna go into the thicker part here where the, the part of the drumette is, just to see what we have here. What we're looking for is an internal temperature of 160 to 165. Actually, that's at 160 right there, so we might be okay. I think I'm just gonna leave them on for about 10 more minutes and then I'll go get the rest of them off of there. Okay, we've let this wing cool off just a little bit. I went ahead and took a knife and just separated it into the drumette and the flapper. Which part do you like? Um, I actually don't know, surprisingly. You like it without the bones, right? Yes. You want me to do that without the bones? So if you do this, take that bone, you grab it right there and you push while holding your finger here. The bone comes out on that side. And then you take this one and you twist and you push. The bone comes out on that side. And there's a boneless chicken wing for you. All right, cheers. Hmm. What do you think? Yes, it's good? very good. Good. I tend to like these a little bit crispier. I might have left it in five, ten minutes longer. Um, tastes really good, and the meat inside is good and tender and moist. But um, yeah, it's a fine balance. You get that crisp on the outside, and you end up not having it that moist. But these taste really good. Very messy. Mm hmm. Mm. You just bite into the bone? Yeah, <laughs> I completely missed the meat. Well, I hope you enjoyed this recipe for the pellet grill smoker wings. They only take about 45 minutes to an hour on average. Again, check your temperature, not your time. Um, that's cooking outside in between 75 and 85 degrees about the time we did it. Really good, didn't take long, maybe five, 10 minutes to prep them. Uh, that was to make the dry rub, mix it with the oil, flip the uh, wings around in it and place them on the grill and the, uh, the grill was preheating while I was making the rub. So really easy recipe. I'm gonna go shut down the grill and we'll see y'all at the next recipe and the next grilling job. Bye y'all.